Hey guys, what's going on? It's me Lily and today I want to show you what I have in my Faraday cages. And actually every now and then it's good to check what you have in there because um, you will forget the contents of the Faraday cage and it happened to me many times. So now it's time to recheck my Faraday cages and I also want to fill up this Faraday bag by the company Off Grid Track. Uh, with some inverters and solar charge controllers. All right, so now let's check the content of this can here. And as you can see, it comes with a, with a lid and a ring. And even without the ring, the lid is going over the edge. So there's just no way that an EMP can come through. All right, so also I would like to state that you never want your electronics to touch the sides of the Faraday cage. Okay, so inside of this bag here, I got my walkie-talkies and ham radios, uh, all of the accessories and charging stations. I got a couple of ham radios in here. And this is, I believe, the most popular ham radio in the prepper world. And then also I got these cheap barfing walkie-talkies. Uh, these they don't require a license and you can hand them out to your neighbors. So yeah, that's it for the walkie-talkies. But also, I never place all of the walkie-talkies that I own in one Faraday cage because in case this one fails, I also have walkie-talkies and ham radios in the other Faraday cage. We got a small inverter with 150 watts. This is one that you can plug into your car, for example if the car is still working. Then we got a USB charging uh, thing, which can charge all kinds of batteries. Then I got a pulse oximeter. So it's always good to have medical equipment. Then I got a Geiger counter, and this is for high levels only, so it doesn't detect very low radiation. I got one more Geiger counter, which was just a cheap one. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to hand this one out to neighbors if it comes to the case. Then here I got a really good Geiger counter, which is also very cheap by the company PewDiePie. And I've tried this one out and compared it to my 500 euro Geiger counter. And this one here did extremely well and it showed the same values as my other expensive Geiger counter. This one only cost like 70 or 80 bucks and that's awesome. So if you haven't gotten a Geiger counter yet, then I can highly, highly recommend that you get a couple of these um, because they are really cheap, but still they are really, really good at detecting low level of radiation. So then also in here I got a modem. So this is exactly the same that I have for my house. And in case everything is fried and let's say after a couple of months, the internet is working again, then I have a second modem for the internet. All right, so now I want to show you what I have in my big aluminum box. Um, first of all, I have this radio here, which is really awesome. It has a hand crank, a little bit of a solar panel, and it's a shortwave radio with a flashlight. I've modified it so that I can put an 18650 battery inside. So that's an awesome radio and I tried it out many times and it's working great. All right, so now I want to show you this little thing, which is the coolest thing on earth. So this is basically a conversion kit for your ham radio. Uh, you can make a battery with it. Uh, you just have to use six AAA batteries and then you can use this instead of the lithium ion battery, which is um, usually used in ham radios. Then what I got here is a power bank and this power bank was super cheap. It only cost like $7 and this one runs with AA batteries and then you have a small power bank with a female USB um, socket. All right, next in here I got a small charger for nickel metal hydride batteries, but this one actually runs with AC, so it's not perfect. So what I also got is this small charger here uh, and this is charging AAA and AA batteries with USB. So that's pretty cool. And then I also got 
one more USB charger for 18650 batteries. And then I got this here. This is an old modem that I got a couple of years back. Uh, then here I got a couple of nice antennas for the ham radio. I got an EMF detector. And now comes the coolest thing. Um, so this here is a battery for my drill. And it's pretty strong. And now they have made a USB charging kit for this battery. So now I can attach it like this and turn it on. And now you have a really good power bank. And that's really, really cool. All right, then I also got a small solar panel. This is good if you have to travel. So this one only has like 20 watts. It's not the most powerful one, um, but it's going to do a good job in recharging a walkie talkie or a small device or a radio. So this is definitely better than nothing and it's small enough so I can fit it in this Faraday cage. In here I also got two more ham radios in case um, yeah, somebody wants to buy it from me, so I keep it in an original package and in a crisis, you know, people freak out and then they say, oh my God, can you sell me your ham radio? And then here I got two to sell. So if one of my neighbors wants to buy it, uh, I got one and that's great. So I got two of them in here. Uh, and then also here I got an ordinary um, hand crank radio and this is of very good quality uh, it was quite expensive back in the day and it also runs with AAA batteries so that's really nice but this is only FM and AM so this is not shortwave still a great radio okay then in here I got my 500 euros Geiger counter and I love this one it's awesome it's the rechargeable version and it's a great device, very accurate for low level radiation. So now let's check out what's in the small box in here. In the small box, again, I have a USB charger for double and triple A batteries. And I also got a small camping lantern. Okay, then in this box here, I have a couple of smaller things. I got one more pulse oximeter. Then I got a watch, which can also be destroyed in an EMP. Then I got a couple of cables, batteries. Then I got a voice recorder. I think it's important to have one when you maybe have to leave messages for your family. So you can record a message and then leave this at home on the table if you have to leave your home so they can listen to your message. Then also here, this is just a standard 12 volt plug. And then I got an old calculator and then also I got a really powerful small flashlight in here which has a small circuit at the inside that could be fried in an EMP event. Then I have another small box. In here I have one more Geiger counter and some batteries. Furthermore in here I got bigger antennas. Then this here is a charger for my lithium ion batteries. Very important that you keep it in a Faraday cage. And then this here is an MPPT, which is charging my e-bike directly from this solar panel here. This is a 220 watt solar panel. It's by the company Off Grid Track and it's strong enough so it can charge your e-bike within three to five hours. Then also here I got a foldable antenna for the ham radio. Then I also want to add two ampere meters. And this is just a charger for normal lead acid batteries. So this is it for my Faraday box and I still have some space left. So um, every now and then I open it up and add a couple of new things. But this is the most important stuff. So next I have a couple of inverters and solar charge controllers that I want to protect from a potential EMP. And also here I got a really cheap CB radio. I tried it out, it's working. I talked to other people here in the vicinity. 
So it's always great to have communication. Now the antenna is quite long, so I could not fit it into the metal box. So this is why now I take it and put it into the big Faraday bag together with the inverters and solar charge controllers. So this is the big inverter. It's still in its original packaging stage. I haven't used it, so it's new. So in here you can see the Faraday fabric which looks really interesting and this was actually designed to protect solar stations so this is big enough to uh, fit an EcoFlow or a Bluetti power station inside and last but not least I also have um, a small travel laptop in here and this one I'm going to place inside the Faraday bag as well. Now I have to fold this over properly and close it like this. The big bag is packed and ready and I will store it like this in my basement. Okay guys, so this is it, but I forgot something. Actually, I want to add a couple of more items to my Faraday cage. The first one is a small phone and there might be the case that the government says they restore the mobile phone towers first. And in that case you want to have a phone so you can communicate again. Communication is key, especially in a survival situation or SHDF situation. Then also here, this is the battery which goes into my radio and it has a small uh, USB charging port here. So you can directly recharge it with USB, which is awesome. The next uh, I want to add a GoPro. This is my old one, but still good enough. So you can film some evidence of maybe some crime that you are witnessing while there's the SHDF situation. So it's always good to have evidence that you can later on show the police um if law and order returns so this is what i have packed into my faraday cages i think i covered pretty much everything i don't know what i'm missing but if i'm missing something then please leave me a comment in the comment section below and if you're interested in this faraday bag then make sure that you check out the company's website of grid track i will put a link to the company and also a coupon code into the description below. Thank you for watching guys and stay tuned till next time.